for right now, what we're doing is we're doing a little bit of day trading. And in day trading, we know that, uh, you know, the trend can be up, it can be down, it can be sideways, and these can all happen uh, within the course of the trading day, regardless of what the overall long-term trend is. Now, we're going to take a look at some longer-term trades as we get sort of moving, but I just want to give you a little bit of background, kind of some of the things that we're looking at, some of the ways that we can place these trades, because, you know, in, in my eyes, it's the kind of thing where we, I've risked 15 pips on this trade so far, and, you know, whether or not it, it, it actually, you know, wins, uh, you know, obviously I want this trade to be a winner, but, you know, when I can get into a trade with about 15 pips of risk, and I think that I, there's potential that I can uh, retest the highs of the day, all right, then that's going to be um, a, a good proposition for me, all right, because I know that the average true range of most of these pairs is around 100 to 125 pips a day, so there's going to be a lot of movement in there, and when you get a lot of movement like that, all you need to do is capture little pieces of it, okay, you don't need to take this thing top to bottom or bottom to top, and, uh, you know, you're going to be able to make some profit, so... Um, let's see. All right, Dan. So Dan got into the trade about 15 minutes ago. That's uh, all right, Dan. I like it. Uh, you looks like uh, 15 minutes ago. You're a little bit lower than we are. Uh, let's see here. How often should a trader check the trend? Longer time frames. Uh, the question from Harley. How long? How often should a trader check the trend or longer time frames? Uh, generally speaking, um, you want to get an idea of what the overall trend is. Um, you know, from a longer term perspective, I usually check it once in the morning. For example, you know, I, I didn't need to check the trend to know that Euro's been down as of late, that we've had a little bit of dollar strength. But as you can see, there's, there's, you know, you really need to define what the trend is. All right, trend can be on a short term trade on a five minute chart. It can be, uh, intermediate on, say, a 30 minute or two hour chart. And then lastly, we can have a longer term trend on, say, you know, a four hour daily chart. So you really need to define what you know, trend it is you're looking at it, and usually that comes in with what type of trades you want to place, okay? If you're somebody who uh, is more of an intraday trader, all right, then you want to look at the shorter-term charts. If you're someone who's a longer-term trader, you want to look at the longer-term charts. So, you know, that's kind of, um, you know, how I'm looking at it and what we're looking at today. But um, right here, I still think 142 um, is going to be decent support for the euro, and there's possibilities that we may get stopped out on this trade, which... You know what, if it happens, so be it. We're going to be looking perhaps to uh, find another entry where we get back in from either a, uh, you know, get back into the long side or potentially short. Okay, maybe a short at 142 is going to be in order. Um, so just real quick, I just want to kind of tell you what's been going on this morning so far um, with regards to the news that we've seen out there. U.S. initial jobless claims, uh, they came in a little bit better than expected. <clears throat> Excuse me. The lower end of 400,000, uh, the expectation was about 420,000, so it's a little bit better than expected, but it's still not a great number. I mean, I think anything in the 400s the market's viewing is negative, all right? But yesterday, we had the release of the minutes of the FOMC meeting, all right? And they've uh, sort of uh, said or made it known that they're in no rush to exit this QE2 policy here. So, you know, yesterday, we saw commodities really take off. We saw stocks rebound. All right, and people are thinking, hey, wait a second, this, this uh, U.S. Fed is going to be accommodated for a while. All right, now we've also got um, supply and demand uh, factors coming into the equation with regard to commodities. All right, supply, uh, there's been some supply disruptions based on uh, some weather-related stuff going on that uh, that's going to potentially force prices higher. And on the second half of the webinar this morning, all right, I'm going to talk about correlations in the marketplace and how you can sort of get a gauge and an idea of how some of these things move based on what, uh, you know, some of their corresponding and correlated commodities are doing. So a lot of different movers that can drive commodity prices, all right, and sometimes we'll see the uh, either the uh, currencies follow, perhaps stocks follow, or vice versa happens. Maybe stocks and commodities follow the currency. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit later on. So... Um, right now, we're still in this trade. All right, it's still valid. Um, and again, low risk opportunity because of the amount of pips. Now, a lot of times when I get into trades, I want to ask myself, well, what does the probability of this trade seem like? You know, is, is there a high probability that this is going to be a winning trade? And that's going to sort of be, um, you know, something that <clears throat> you have to determine for yourself. And it's going to be, uh, you know, through the course of your own trading, all right, and the different setups you use, what are... Uh, things that tend to work more than others, all right? Um, now, this uh, trade that we're looking at here, this doesn't look so hot right here. I, I believe we're going to be stopped out shortly, all right? But it looks like we are in that oversold area, and should this hold, which I don't think it will, 
perhaps we're going to be looking down at the next little support level around 142. All right, so we're taken out. We lost 12 pips. Uh, we gave it a shot. Whoops. And we're down 25 bucks on the morning, which, you know, that's okay. Um, we're starting out uh, at 9 a.m. here in the U.S. We've got U.S. stocks opening at 9.30. And then the other piece of news that hopefully we're going to be able to get a little bit of market action off of is at 10 a.m., we're going to get the existing home sales figures here in the U.S. Now, uh, existing home sales uh, are going to be an important figure today because right now I think, you know, unemployment is the uh, major issue driving the economy. That's what everybody's focused on. That's something that affects everybody, especially if you are one of the unemployed. All right, but the housing market really is the major problem going on here in the U.S. because, uh, you know, you've got prices declining. We had such a housing bubble, um, you know, people who have been foreclosing on their homes. Banks are sitting there. They've got all these mortgages on the books. All right. Interest rates have stayed extraordinarily low, and prices are still going down. Well, what happens if interest rates start going up? That's going to put further pressure on home prices to go down. So, um, you know, that's going to be a situation that the Fed is actively trying to manage because they don't want to see their buddies at the banks sitting on bad mortgages. How are they going to pay themselves bonuses? All right, they can't pay themselves bonuses. They could potentially lose more money, which means the Fed needs to come in and bail them out again. You know, these banks haven't done much in order to get their books in order as far as, uh, you know, some of these uh, mortgage problems they have. And the government has done absolutely nothing about trying to, you know, solve this housing problem. So, you know, that's the big issue right now. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, you're seeing uh, this crazy accommodative monetary policy um, here in the U.S.